Welcome to Living Springs. These are your announcements. Evening service, Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth every Wednesday. Prayer, 6 p.m. Service, 6.30. Intercessory Prayer every Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Men's, Women's, and Youth Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Mother's Day tea canceled to be rescheduled. Hey, church. We We need volunteers. LS Kids. LS Worship. LS Nursery. Overflow Youth. Ask a leader today. Connect with us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Have a great service. Good morning, Living Springs. How are we today? Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms and grandmothers and mothers-to-be. We just say, God bless you. Would you please just stand as we begin to worship this morning? Amen. God is so good and faithful, isn't he? Yes. Even in the on the rainy days, God is good. God is good. Somebody say amen to that. Today we're going to worship the Lord with all of our mind, all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. We're going to worship Jesus because he's worthy of our praise, isn't he? Hallelujah, he's worthy. And you weren't here by accident, here by accident today. You were sent with a purpose. Amen. For fellowship, for faith, and for love. Purpose and destiny. Thank you, Jesus, for this time of worship. We just give this time to you, God. We honor you, King Jesus. And we say, welcome. Welcome, Lord, in this space. Welcome, Holy Spirit, here. Oh, we welcome you. Come on, church, and pray just a little bit with me. We welcome you, Lord. Say thank you for being with us this morning. We honor you, King Jesus, with our worship and with our words, Father. I pray over our service today, God, that you would abide with us and bless every single moment. We pray over our city today, Lord Jesus, that you would speak, Father God, to those who don't know that your Holy Spirit God would abide with us. Praise because you're sovereign. 
Grace cause you're sovereign. Grace cause you reign. Grace cause you rose and defeated the grave. Grace cause you're faithful. Grace cause you're true. Grace cause there's nobody greater than Come on, sing it out. Grace cause you're sovereign. Grace cause you reign. Grace cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's no So good? You know, we serve the God of the harvest, amen? We serve the God of great revival, amen, don't we? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray this prayer with me this morning. Lord Jesus, send revival. Lord, send your revival. Not the revival of man, but the revival of our Savior, amen?
peace like a river come wash over me. Curse me in water as deep as the sea. Hide me in love and your healing in peace like a river. I worship your majesty. I worship your name. Jesus, my everything. All that I am is this morning. Would you just raise holy hands to heaven? Amen. Yes, Lord. Church, sing it. Jesus, my everything. Come on, sing that again. Come on. Worship your majesty. Worship your name. Jesus, my everything. All that I
Let him hear your voice. Come on and praise his holy name. Worship your majesty. Worship your glory. Jesus, my Lord. All that I am. I'll start to give the Lord praise this morning. Come on. Jesus. Hallelujah. There's something special about waiting on God. We can get into church services and just feel like we're in a rush to get to that next song. <laughs> you know, but sometimes the Holy Spirit says, I need you to sing that again. Yeah. It's like when you get on a good scripture, right? And it just starts to speak to you and you start to meditate on that scripture. That word starts to become more than just ink on a page, right? God wants more for us, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. By the way, for our guests, we believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit here. Amen. <laughs> because he's a living God that we are madly in love with somebody say amen and he gave us the helper he gave us the Holy Spirit and he used us to reach the world that's lost and dying not just so we can have gifts but so that we can be used in the hands of our Savior our Master Oh, Lord, we're just clay in your hands today, aren't we? Just clay in the hands of Jesus. So, Lord, start to mold and shape us.
Priceless in every way, wonderful, beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way, wonderful, beautiful, glorious, matchless in start to give him thanks for what he's done in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Would you just turn to your neighbor this morning and just give him a big hug? And if you really love, really love him, you can give him a big, a big kiss if you want to. <laughs> Welcome to Living Springs Church. Thank you for being with us today. Welcome to Living Springs. These are your announcements. Evening service, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth every Wednesday. Prayer, 6 p.m. Service, 6.30. Intercessory Prayer every Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Men's, Women's, and Youth Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Mother's Day tea canceled to be rescheduled. Hey, church. We need volunteers. LS Kids. LS Worship. LS Nursery. Overflow Youth. Ask a leader today. Connect with us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Have a great service. Hallelujah. Can we get a shout of praise to King Jesus this morning? Come on. Man, I am so grateful to see all of you in church today. Again, happy Mother's Day to all the grandmothers, the mamas. Thank y'all so much for all y'all do, especially for us men sometimes, right? Come on, we're still big kids too, right? <laughs> I just want to take a second to welcome any first-time guests here. Thank you for coming to Living Springs Assembly of God Church this morning. Uh, if you haven't gotten a... Uh, a guest card, please let our ushers know in the back. They'll be there to help you, assist you with anything you need. There are a great team back there that we got going on. Brother Daryl, Brother James, come on, y'all, come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and again, thank you to all those watching by live and tuning in faithfully every week. Thank you for doing that. And uh, as we transition, um, Mike's kind of hot, but uh, as we transition, um, into offering, 
I just want to open up in prayer, call our ushers forward, and uh, just pray real quick. Heavenly Father, thank you for dwelling in your house today. God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you, Lord, that you gave the ultimate sacrifice, and that was your son, Jesus. Lord, I pray for every family in this church today, God, that, Lord, as they sow a seed, that they sow with faith, Father God, and that they reap a harvest, that they won't be able to contain it, God. Lord, I pray that you bless this house today, God, that you extend the stakes of this house, God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you as you give. We'll have some instructions on the screen for you guys as well. Thank you. So worship your majesty. I worship your holy name. Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours. I worship your majesty. I worship your holy name. Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours. I'm yours. As I worship your majesty, I worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything, all that I am. I worship your majesty. I worship your holy name. Jesus, my everything. All that I am is Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That's my fault. Sorry, youth pastor, that's your guitar. <laughs> we'll find it here in a second. Thank you, Jesus. Haven't done worship in a long time. So, uh... We're praying for our worship pastor to come on back to us, worship director to come on back to us. Miss Lauren's been a little bit underneath the weather over the last couple of weeks, and so would you extend your hand towards this sister right now? We just want to lift her up in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you heal your people. Father God, I thank you that by the stripes of your son, we have healing, and I declare that over Lauren today. I declare a congestion to leave. I declare her sinuses to clear. I declare faith and courage to come inside this woman that she is called to help lead us in worship at this church. Father God, let this confirmation be for her today that she is loved in this place. Yes, Lord. She is cared for here. Thank you, Jesus. Not only is she a mama that loves her family, she is a sister who loves this church and her brothers and sisters here. Thank you, God, for touching and blessing her today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for coming to be with us today. This is the, a good place to be on a rainy day. Again, happy Mother's Day to all of our mamas. Would you turn to a mama and say, I love you so much? That's right. That's right. Love you, baby. And to all of our mothers watching by live, we say we love you. God bless you. I heard it's been a good couple of weeks without Miss Shelby and I here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> at, the very, at the very end of service today, Miss Shelby and I are going to share about our journey 
to two countries that um, are now very near and dear to our hearts. And uh, we just want to thank you for the, uh, the opportunity to go to these places. To the staff and leadership of the church, thank you for the send. Uh, it was worth uh, the, uh, the, the time and effort, the investment. God spoke to us, both of us, in a way that has helped transition our hearts and the way that we see the gospel here in America. Amen. That's it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you haven't been on a missions trip, you should go. Even though right here in Palestine, Texas, is missions trip enough, right? There's a lot going on in our city. There's a lot of people right here in your city of Palestine that need to hear the name Jesus Christ. And who will they hear from unless the preacher is sent? The call is upon every one of us that are called by Christ Jesus. And what a wonderful place to know that God is going to use you for great and mighty things. Somebody give the Lord praise for that this morning. You don't have to go a thousand miles away, although we did. And it was wonderful. We're glad to be very uh, back home with all of you, with our family. We love you. We missed you. And it's good to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Adam. Uh, so again, God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Today we're going to speak into the heart of something called love. Love. Love is a valuable treasure in God's kingdom. In fact... Every single thing in God's kingdom is based around that one concept. Every part of who we are, it leans into love. Everything that we have with God was based on love. Every aspect of a Christian life is foundational in the truth of love. And this comes to mind when I think about it, to love and be loved. It's relational, isn't it? Love is just not a foreign concept that's solely harbored in the, in, the, in the heart of a man or woman. But love, amen, transitions across the world itself into all creation. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. People love to be loved. Do you realize that today? People love to be cherished. I love to be loved and cherished. There's two, there's two types of love that my heart longs for, actually. The love of my father and the love of my bride. And the reason that my heart longs for those two types of love is because that is the same love that Jesus longs for. The love of his father to serve him, to be by his side, and the love of his bride, which is you and me. Do you love Jesus today, church? Amen. Amen. So do I. I'm glad that we can be unified in love today. The love of a mother is a powerful example of God's love. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Love is an interesting concept when it comes to mamas. I've seen mamas go through hell and high water for their babies. Somebody say amen, mama, say amen. amen. And I have an interesting story at the very end I'd like to share with you this morning. But our verse today is from 1 Corinthians 13, 13. You know it by heart. Now these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. You know, when God created the first mama, he had every one of us in mind. Aren't you glad that he was thinking about you all those years ago? When God created the first mama, he, he was thinking of me. But for Eve to believe by faith in God's promise, well, that changed everything. Everything changed when she believed that she could be a mama. Eve would be the first, but certainly not the last. My first from our scripture from Corinthians is faith. Can I tell you this morning that faith is found in motherly love? Somebody say amen to that, please. The Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, mamas, today I encourage you, have faith for your children. Have faith for those of the wayward son and the wayward daughter. Have faith! Because God has given you the gift of being a mother so that you may believe for the greater good of your children, for the greater good of your family, and for the greater good of the church. 
Faith is found in motherly love. It is ingrained in mothers to love and to have faith. In every believer, there's a place, a seed, a mustard seed of faith that's within us to believe for the greater good. It was talked about in our Sunday school this morning that there's a difference, though, in the faith and the faithfulness. Two different concepts. To faith is to believe into salvation, grace through faith to be saved in Jesus. But to be a mama and to do the hard thing takes faithfulness. Amen? Perhaps the long days at work or the coming to home to cook a good meal, washing those clothes, doing those dishes, cleaning up those bumps and bruises. That's all a part of faithfulness and love. See, God knew that we needed a mama. Guys, say amen to that, please. Not just a mother, but someone who would be there for us, especially on difficult days. Mm. What amazing thing God placed in mama, starting with Eve, is the power of the loving embrace. The loving embrace. You can be having the worst of days, but one hug from mama makes everything better. Can we say amen to that, please? My mother, I can remember as a boy, my mother would make huge meals for my father, my brother and I, and she would go out of her way to show love and affection by feeding us. Come on, guys, can you say the way to your heart through your stomach? This was one way she would embrace us, right? And she would let us know that we are loved. And at every dinner table, we would pray. At every meal, we would give thanks for what God has given to us. And my mother would cherish those moments. I would see it on her face because if you're like me and you're you're at the dinner table praying, you'd you'd peek every now and then, right? You little peek ski to see actually who's actually praying good, right? (laughs) And so I'd get me a little peek and I'd watch mama pray. And I'd watch my daddy pray over a meal. And I, I remember one time seeing my mom and we were going through some hard things. See, I didn't grow up with a lot. Can we relate with that this morning? Can I be a little transparent with you? Okay. Amen. I'll take that as a yes. And so everything that we had was a blessing. When the cupboard was full, we were blessed. When the refrigerator was full, we were blessed. Somebody say amen to that, please. Amen. And so every meal for my mama counted, every one of them. And I remember peeking up from the, the prayer and looking at my mama one time, and we didn't have much on the table, but she was there and she was crying. And I can remember tears coming down her face. And I know that I was loved. Because there was something in front of me. It wasn't much, but it was enough. You know, God, when he comes to us, he's always on time, first of all, never late. But he comes to us in a way where we know that we're loved. And a mother's love speaks yet still today to me. And my mama, who's going through hard times right now with Alzheimer's, I love her and I remember those times that she cared for me. This is one way that she would show that love was through that meal. And I was always grateful for those meals and times at the dinner table. My family growing up, my mother loved us greatly and still does. She saw to it that my brother and I, we lived in a Christian home and she would take us to church. Kicking and screaming, right boys and girls? And my mother today still loves to give me those great big hugs. And I wish she were here right now. You have your mamas beside you. Would you just give them a hug, please? They deserve that. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And I think of my wife this morning as a mama. She didn't know I was going to say these things. Here we are, baby. My wife and mother of two children. And she shows her love by serving us with sacrificial acts of love and kindness every single day. And she, like you, the rest of you mamas, has love in her heart for those around her. She sure does. And 
Shelby seeks to do good by those whom she loves. Plain and simple. It's all over her. It's written all over her face. That I just wasn't called by myself for ministry. I was called because of my wife saying yes to Jesus this day. I'm here because of her yes as well as mine. I'm here because of my children's yes to Jesus Christ. And like you, she has faith to believe in new life. This church has had life come to it because of women like her, like you, that have stepped into this house to say, God, there is something you can do here. There is a special purpose for this place. And I'm going to believe by faith in love that it will come to pass. Can we agree with that this morning, church? Mamas, can we agree with that? Can we agree with that, sisters? And that for your children's children, God has a plan for you. There's a song by Carrie Job called The Blessing. And on our trip in Estonia, we were in this, this monastery, an old, old monastery, that still had the cathedral intact. It wasn't, it wasn't destroyed. A lot of things that we went and looked at, they were already in ruin. But this was in an intact monastery that had been around from the 1300s. What? To get to see something like that. Walk on the, the property and touch those hand-carved, hand-hewn stones that it was built by, by the monks who lived there. And we sat in the cathedral. We stood there in the cathedral. And we sang the blessing. Amen. 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 And as the echo of those amens rang off of the walls of that cathedral, you could feel instantly the presence of Jesus. You know, Jesus is not a thousand miles away. In fact, he's not even a thousand yards away. He's right here and right now. And the presence of God as we worship this morning, even though our words might have been not the most beautiful words singing, God still abided with us in this place, and he abides now with us to say, I love you, I am with you, I am for you, never against you, because you believe by faith. You trust in me, and you have faith to endure hard things. Praise God. It's the hard things that bring us to a place of understanding Christ more. The Bible says that we must suffer as Christ. And from our message this morning at the end we share about our trip, we're going to talk about that suffering a bit. Hope is found in motherly love. Hope. Say hope with me. Don't you know you have it today? There's always a hope in Christ Jesus. Please say amen. And a passage that comes to mind is from John 16, verse 21, which, which says this. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby... Amen. She no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. What a moment. I can remember the first of our children being born. I can remember Caroline as she was coming into the world and the embrace that came from that new baby after she took her first breath of life being held by my wife. You know, a mother's love is quickened to a child at birth. The first look upon the little one has grown inside of this seal of promise of motherly love. Knowing that the child would be yours forever. Aren't you glad, mamas, that you have children that love you? Aren't you glad, mamas, that you love your babies? No matter how old they are. Can you look at your baby mamas and say, I love you, baby? <laughs> That's right. They'll, by the way, will always be our mama's baby. But it baffles me how a young woman could even consider giving up a child. Or worse, aborting one. Isn't life more precious than that? I often wonder how babies can be so quick to be thrown away. We're going to talk about that a little bit at the end of the service today. And don't the mothers know that one of the greatest gifts given to women is to be a mama? It's a gift. It's a treasure to be a mother, isn't it? Don't they know? If they don't, who would tell them? And a passage I'm reminded of comes from the first chapter of John, which speaks to us today of the love of God. It speaks to us as his babies, birthed through Jesus. 
to know him as a good father, not to be thrown away by him. And it reads this. The true light, which gives light to everyone, say, that's me, was coming into the world. And he was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Jesus was born of the virgin, who came into this world, which he created and gave us hope. Somebody say amen. Church, listen. Every single possibility that wasn't, now is. Every opposing force on eternal life, on eternal life, was defeated. Every stronghold of oppression broken. Every chain broken. And every battle won when Jesus came to us. But this hope must be chosen. I'll never forget when the first child, when our first child was, was born, in the embrace of my wife with our daughter. It was like my wife could hold her forever and almost did. Amen. I remember our first time we took her back to church, and it was, it was that loving embrace of eternal grace. Amen. That mama was bound to that baby. Nobody was going to take her baby that day. And they didn't. It took a little bit of time to start trusting those around us with our babies. But I saw that embrace yesterday when my wife hugged her baby girl right before she went back to school and to go on her first mission trip to the Amazon River Basin of Brazil where she's taking the gospel of Jesus to tribal people groups for them to hear the name Jesus some for the first time. Powerful, right? You never stop loving your babies. And I know this. Amen. Jesus says he gave the right to become children of God. Every child ever born will have the right to one day stand before God, having made the case for Christ or not. The little ones or the big ones. And every baby born or aborted, every little one that is still born or handed over for adoption, every precious soul, that has ever been or will be, will be presented before the Lord for his approval. Church, do you know Jesus today? I pray that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I pray that there's eternity waiting for you, that you would know that Jesus went before you as your brother to prepare a place for you in heaven, a mansion even, where the greatest of mansions on earth pale in comparison. Even Trump's Mar-a-Lago pales in comparison to where we get, we're headed, Amen. There's nothing greater than knowing that you're loved by a Savior and being embraced, amen, in his arms. I believe that God gave us mamas so that we could be reminded of love through hope. And I know this, that when a child is born and loved, the story starts to change from death to life. Isn't that true? So very true. I've met so many children working in this community who have not had moms and dads present. But the instant that you show them love and mercy and grace and you start to speak life into them, a light starts to take place, amen, inside their heart where there was death. Now there's life, there's living, there's hope, there's a faith there now. It's instantaneous sometimes. When you speak to babies, you speak to young people, amen, for youth pastors and children's workers that are doing that right now today that are serving your children by reminding them of how they're loved. Thank you, Jesus. There's a responsibility that we have as believers in Christ to love the next generation. Please say amen to that. But even past that, that love is to example Christ to them. How will they know to follow Jesus unless they're shown how? How will they be discipled unless somebody's willing to teach? How will they know unless you're willing to make the sacrifices to be a father and mother in their life? How will they know? How will they understand what love is unless you're willing to love? Do I need to say that again so you can understand that clearly? Because so many people will come to church and then they'll go home 
and they'll be somebody else. They'll go to the work on Monday morning and they'll do things that they're going to regret on Sunday morning. Can I tell you that God's called us to be more than that? He's asked of us, amen, to be more than that. He's asked of us to be like His Son, to be as the church. In this morning's Sunday school lesson, we were taught about the fruits of the Spirit, amen. And one of those, one of those fruits is long-suffering and patience and patience and mercy kindness God wants us to have these things as a people so we can be better encouragers of those who don't amen we're the conduit that God uses to speak life into the next generation come on church are you still with me I know this that a mother's loving embrace can change the world around us one precious baby at a time hallelujah and amen and I know this that God doesn't make a mistake when he's creating life hallelujah and amen David said this in Psalms 139. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Somebody give the Lord praise this morning. <laughs> David goes on to say, wonderful are your works. Would you look at your neighbor and say, you sure look wonderful today. Yes, you do. And it says this, my soul knows it very well. This morning, I want, I want you to know something. You don't have to have all of your ducks in a row. You don't have to have it all figured out in life. All you've got to be is present with the presence of God. And in the presence of God, He makes all things new. Amen and amen. There's no mistake inside of you when you have Jesus. Because He'll lift up that sinner and He'll make you a saint. Amen for the presence of God that will speak to you, that will make you unmute, uh, from being unmuted, amen, to being able to speak the impossible. He'll give you the faith you need, the courage you need, the hope that you need to do great and mighty things in this world. For you are wonderfully made. My frame was not hidden from you, says David, when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Come on, church, are you hearing that this morning? That every day, including this day, was made for you, amen. Not by mistake, not by accident, by, by some happenstance. God created life in you today so that you could connect with the Creator. Who do you worship today? Do you worship the Lord God Almighty or do you worship someone else? Because self can be a real image, can't it? Can't we get in front of God on some small idols of our life with fear, doubt, and unbelief? Can't we simply maneuver sometimes into that place of pride where God says, I'm asking more of you, but you say simply no. God wants more because he wants us to understand more. Amen and amen. To all the mothers and mothers-to-be, it's worth every tear. Listen to this. It's worth every mistake. It's worth every test of faith and every sacrifice you make so a child knows that they are loved. Every one of them. And God did not make a mistake by placing a child inside of you. God never makes mistakes. The devil would have you believe a different story. And if you've made mistakes in your past, there is grace here for you today. I would encourage you to please not leave here without knowing that God still loves you. And Jesus has made hope possible. Amen? There's a love in a mother's embrace. I'm getting close here. Love is a constant in Christ. Would you say amen? To love a child is to be as Christ. Say amen again. Amen. And one more time, to love a child and give them back to God is to be one with God. Say amen. Amen to that. And the passage from John 3 that we all know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. Stop condemning yourself. Stop telling yourself you're not good enough. Stop saying I'll never be able to qualify for what God's asking. Because I cannot tell you that God created the five-fold ministry. 
And in that, you are one of those things. Somewhere, you fit. Amen. There's a place for you. There's a thing God has in store for you. But you have to believe that. The enemy would only come to condemn you away from that calling. But God says, I've sent my son so that you would know that you are called. Hallelujah and amen. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already. You've got to have a faith. You've got to have a hope. And it's in Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. There are so many people who still walk in condemnation because they do not know the name Jesus. But today, for you who believe in Christ, would you please raise your hand and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah. For you are the ones chosen of God to be something special in this world. To be used by your Creator for a purpose. Amen and amen. God gave us His love by sending His Son to us. Not to be a warring king. Not to be the, uh, the, the one who was just a, a fleeting moment of, of belief. But to be, amen, the ending sacrifice. He came, amen, so that we might have life to the fullest by giving His to the fullest. And because of that, today we live, we breathe, and we die knowing that we have a Savior who loves us. Love is birthed out of sacrifice. And every mother that's ever done immense or immeasurable things for their children knows this kind of sacrifice and this kind of love. In the 1940s, the country of Estonia was oppressed. We just came back from the country of Estonia. In the 1940s, when war was out, the country of Estonia was oppressed and ran by the communist regime of Russia. And during the time of the red tide sweeping across the country, leading to mass killings of men, women, and children, these killings were done very publicly for all to see so that the, the regime would, would be representative of their power and authority. And there are stories of mothers, listen to this please, that would hide their children in horrific places like the Jews in the Nazi death camps, just to keep them alive. And while visiting this place, the voice of the martyrs still cries out across that nation. There's a memorial that's set up in memory of these people. I have a picture of that memorial. If we can put that on the screen, that'd be great. The Marame Memorial, which was set up and built in memory of all those who were sacrificed. It was set up as a way of healing and for remembrance of all the sacrifices that families made during that time and all the ones who were lost. The next image, it shows a long hallway. If we can go to that one. The long hallway. There it is. That stretches about a quarter of a mile that you can walk. And on every square placard, I don't know if you can't see it clearly, but every square placard, there are names there. Names from top to bottom. Of those who were condemned to death Wrongfully killed, oppressed. God loved every one of them. And many names are mentioned on these walls, but also the names of those who were never found. And those who come to that memorial, there's a picture of a flower. They still honor those who've passed away. People still come and they pray for healing and remembrance. And as you walk out from the memorial, there's a place where there's three crosses. Three crosses. And in Estonia, it's an atheistic nation. In fact, it brags on the fact that it's atheist. They have no religion. They, they claim no religion because of the oppression that came before them. We'll talk about that here in just a few moments. But as I saw these three crosses, you and I both know what that stands for. Amen. To them, though, it stands for Veterans of war. There's no Christ attached to those crosses for them. But God sent us to pray. Amen. Next picture. Or the praying, the prayer. God sent us to pray so that they might remember that God loves them. God sent us to pray for these people so that they can know that if they forgive, they can be forgiven. We went to Estonia to pray for the people that we've never met because Jesus sent us, because God loves them, because he loves the brokenhearted, and he loves to restore nations. Somebody say amen to that. In closing, I have this for you. The love of God knows no bounds. 
If it's wrapped up in pretty packages to be handed on to a few, it wouldn't be love. It wouldn't be God. But the love of God is for the world over. I'm going to ask my wife to come up and we can get ready to share. We can have, what is it, baby? We're going to close live in just a little bit. Yes, amen. Thank you for reminding me. But God knew we needed mamas to help us. To know and understand this kind of love. The love of a mother is likened as unto Christ to unconditional love. To love sacrificially and to love without borders. God gave us mamas so that the world might know love. And today, moms, grandmothers, moms-to-be, we say thank you for loving and loving well. Can we pray together? And then we'll close our lives after the prayer. Father, we thank you. We love you. We say thank you, Jesus, for mamas today. Thank you for putting a hope within us that we can know what grace is through those around us. Thank you, God, for my mother today. I ask that you would bless her and keep her, that you make your face shine upon her. Lord God, that you'd be gracious to her. I ask you, Father God, for the same for every mom here, every grandmother here today, that the love of Jesus would abide with you in all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to take some time this morning with you and talk about our trip to if the live is cut.